tell me what you see on your screen. Welcome to EBC Online Bible Study and You. Okay. Is that what everybody else is saying? Yeah, I see you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, I see uh, the same thing. Okay. Hey, Stacey, welcome. Hi, cousin. Hi, cousin. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Aunt Dale. Okay. All right. All righty. All right. Let's just uh, trying to see where. No. There we go. You got a precise question. All right. Uh, so uh, we're actually we're going to be uh, talking um, in regards to our, our Bible study for uh, this month. We're going to be talking about discipleship, uh, the importance of discipleship, um, purposes of discipleship, the goals um, of discipleship. Um, and of course, we understand that this is important because it is a command of Christ. It's something that Christ commanded us to do, uh, that he has uh, stated that he wants us to do. And as we see here, our key verse is going to be coming from St. Matthew 28, 18 through uh, 20. If everyone uh, everyone can, we have, uh, of course, saying St. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Uh, and if you, uh, if you have that, it's going to uh, read as such, uh, 28, verse 28, verse 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatever I have commanded you. Uh, okay. All right. So again, discipleship, um, what the keys here? We know that this is known as the Great Commission um, from Christ, where he is stating what he wants us as the body to do, all right? Uh, and so the great part of this is an importance of what we as believers are to do. Um, this is important because it kind of gives us our, if, if you will, our, mar our marching orders, uh, letting us know what, um, you know, what people should be, uh, let me see, actually, actually, all right, and also while, while we're on, we just ask everyone to just kind of mute their phone, a little, you know, just so we can kind of, um, you know, make sure that, um, okay, great, so, yeah, if everybody could just hit, hit mute on the thing, it would be perfect. All right. So, uh, again, we're talking about uh, discipleship, talking about the importance of what Christ, um, the commands that he is giving uh, for the disciples. And by understanding really what his commands are and what he wants us to do, I think will help to galvanize us so that we know exactly what it is that we should be doing. If you can agree, a lot of times it becomes... Um, you know, we can become, I won't say stale, but sometimes we can, um, if we forget what it is that we're supposed to do, we can kind of enter into a situation where uh, things become routine, things become mundane, things can actually become boring, if you will. Uh, but when we really understand the command and the commission uh, that Christ has given us, uh, it's something that really ought to really energize us because it's something that's ever, is always something going on. It's always something to do. Uh, you see here, first of all, he says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Uh, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Um, you know, so that word teach means to, uh, to disciple. Okay. Um, you know, and that's what he wants to do. He says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. And so we're, we shouldn't be just comfortable with, you know, where we are, our little crew, our little group, 
um, it's something that we should be doing uh, or something that we should be, uh, okay, uh, it's something that we should be doing um, on a consistent basis, okay? Uh, so, and that's what really what the, the purpose of, of going over this lesson is so that we can really understand what is what what should I be doing? What are the things that I should be doing as it relates to uh, my call? What is my purpose? Where is my place? Um, we understand that we are, are gifted. Um, that God has given us spiritual gifts in the body. And when we understand our spiritual gifts and how we come together and how we function, that it, all of us have been given these certain gifts so that we can accomplish this mandate that Christ has given us. He says to go and teach, uh, to go and teach, go and to disciple them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe. Again, that we're teaching, we're teaching. Um, and so discipleship is something that it really is, is, is something that takes time. You know, so we're not, we're not just telling people, you know, getting them saved. But now that we have introduced them to Christ, now what is the next step is to teach them. And what are we teaching them? We're teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all way, even into the end of the world. And so we see here uh, that right before Christ ascends, that he is given these instructions. This is what I want you to do. I want you to disciple. I want you to teach. Uh, I don't, after, uh, not just sharing the word, once you share the word, I now want you to teach them, uh, teach them what it is that they're supposed to do, teach them to observe the things that I've commanded you, so the things that you've seen me uh, do, I want you to teach them, and then he gives us, he gives his disciples uh, something that's very important, and what is that, lo, I am with you, okay, so you're not in this by yourself, I know the tax may seem daunting at times, but I want to let you know you are not in this by yourself, that I am with you. And then he gives us how long he's with us. How long are you with us? Lo, I'm with you even until the end of the world. Okay. So this encourages you and I, because it lets us know what? It lets us know that, that regardless of what God has, uh, the task that he has given us, no matter how big it seems to be, um, that he is with us throughout the whole, the whole situation. And that will encourage us so that when I know what I'm doing, when I know this is what God has called me to, you know what? This is, I, I know he's with me. I know he's with me. I know he's with me. And that's the exciting thing, uh, you know, as it relates to our, um, you know, our, our lesson here. All right. So uh, let's see. All right, um, let me see. Okay. Okay, all right. I'm sorry, people, we have time some more uh, little difficulties. All right, guys, can you just tell me what you see on the screen right now? Just me? I see you. Just you. Okay. Just me? Just okay. you. All right. Thank you. Let me uh, go and share my screen. I see you and other people on the call. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, screen one, screen two. Share. Okay. What about now? We I, see see the, the, I see the PowerPoint. Just like yeah. the chip. Okay. So you can't see it. I see you now. Okay. We are just having a ball today. So many challenges. Okay. Well, that was a lie. We are we are going to, we're going to get through this. Uh it's a it's a nice. Um, all right, so I may have to leave it like this just because um, I wanted to have it full screen, but as long as you can see, can everybody read this? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so first thing, the uh, definition, disciple, is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of others. So 
if we're going to understand what discipleship is, uh, then we, we need to understand uh, what a disciple is. You know, what am I being called for? If Christ has given me this, um, you know, if he's given me this uh, mandate, then I really, I should know what it is that he's asking me to do. Okay. So he's asking me to be a disciple. Of course, we should understand what is uh, a disciple. All right. So it is the one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another. The next is the process of training people incrementally in some discipline or way of life. All right. Uh, so in, a, in, in teaching, we're training. Okay. And I, I believe that we understand the importance of, of training. And what we're training is that we're training them in some discipline or way of life. And so we're teaching them uh, in, in a way to be disciplined. We're teaching them in a, in a way of life. All right. So disciple fundamentally can mean a follower or someone who is a learner. Okay. So disciple means they are a follower uh, and they're a learner. So you're not just following someone, you're actually learning. So you're a learner. As a learner, you have to be open to their teaching. There's no point of following someone if you're not going to be, uh, if you're not going to learn from them. So when you have, a, it's just like getting a mentor. Um, when you get a mentor or a teacher, the purposes of having a mentor or a teacher is so that you can learn from them. And a lot of times when you, you know, uh, when you pick a mentor, uh, you pick someone not only that you want to learn from, but in many cases, someone who you want to mimic or imitate uh, or, or, or to be like. Uh, so um, a lot of times that's why marketing is so uh, huge uh, through all kinds of genres, sporting, entertainment. And what happens, you start seeing kids uh, wanting to emulate their favorite uh, entertainer or their favorite athlete, uh, you know, they, they like to be like them. And this is why a lot of times, uh, you know, people and agents and different things like that try to get the athletes to live a certain way, act a certain way, because there are people who are looking at them, looking to emulate them, looking to be like them. Okay. And so when we talk about being a disciple uh, and you and I being a disciple, we are training people in a certain discipline, we're teaching them a certain way of life, and that life is a life in, life in Christ. Okay, and so we first uh, have to be a follower, and then we first have to also be a learner. So not only following Christ, but we have to uh, learn from Him, be willing to do the things uh, that He did, do the things that He's teaching us to do. Um, we can't just be followers, meaning we can't just um, just say, I want to be like this, um, but I got to be able to say, you know what? I need to listen to what you're saying, and I need to do what it is that you're saying if I want to be like you, even if I don't really understand what you're telling me to do. The whole purpose of being connected to a teacher is that you're not going to know everything that the teacher knows. Am I right? And so since you're not going to know everything that the teacher knows, there will be some things that the teacher is going to ask you to do that you may not quite understand. And in some cases, to be honest, you may not even agree with, but the purpose of being with that teacher is so that you can learn what they know. If you knew it, there would be no reason for you to follow them. Am I right? I feel like my pastor says I can see you. Y'all can nod your heads. So I can help me out here. <laughs> All right. So, um, so your follower, someone who's a learner. All right. Discipleship is the process of devoting oneself to a teacher to learn from and become like them. So it's a process of devoting. It's a process of saying, you know what? I want to devote myself to this teacher and I want to learn like them. Why? Because I want to be like them. And so the purpose of when he says, go ye therefore and teach, go ye therefore. So that means to go ye therefore and disciple, go ye therefore and um, you know, teach them this way of life. Go ye therefore and teach them this discipline. Go ye therefore and teach them to be followers. Go ye therefore and teach them to be learners. 
So we're not just attracting people to the church. We're not just attracting people to Christ, but we are responsible for teaching them, to train them. And so it's not just the pastor's responsibility to teach. It's not just the pastor's responsibility to train, but you and I had in our different areas have been gifted so that we can do what? Gifted so that we can help train in our certain way. There are certain gifts that you have uh, that when you're functioning in it, uh, it makes the body work. I don't need to know everything if I'm connected with a body of people who together in their in our different ways of operating can move forward, all right? So discipleship is the process of devoting oneself to a teacher to learn and to become like them, all right? So when we look at this word teach, the Greek word is uh, math to say it, okay, which means to make disciples. Its, fundam its fundamental meaning is one who seeks to learn from another, okay? So again, these are just, you know, the same definitions are uh, just looking to kind of um, move forward and really give, uh, you know, just some, you know, some definitions so that we really understand because um, this foundation is going to be necessary as we continue in our lesson, as we continue uh, and as we move forward. All right, is going to be uh, very important. All right, and so to make disciples, fundamental, the one who seeks to learn from another. For the Christian, this refers to the process of learning the teachings of Jesus and following after his example in obedience through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so Jesus promised, he said, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. He says, when I, when I leave, I'm going to leave you a comforter. I'm going to leave you uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's, I'm going to be with you in another form, if you will. All right. Um, so I'm going to give you uh, the comforter, the one who comes alongside to help, the one that's going to help you accomplish this task. And so we, we understand that you and I are not, we're not in this thing by ourselves. Um, we have some, we have power to do what it is that Christ has given us to do. We have been given power to walk in obedience. We've been given power to make disciples. We've been given power to teach someone the way. We've been given power to uh, uh, teach them in a way, in a disciplined way, so that they become mature. See, the, see the object uh, of, of discipleship is to teach someone to the point that they are mature enough to then teach somebody else. All right. So when we are discipling people, when we when, when the person comes down and they give their life to Christ, that's when the process starts. We we are now teaching them the ways of Christ, um, not just the ways of our church, not just the ways of our tradition, um, but we're teaching them the ways of Christ. What 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 is it? What does it mean to be a follower of Christ? Teaching them to be what? A learner of Christ. Uh, teaching them to uh, observe what was his examples. What did he do? How did he do it? You know, we had this same, you know, what would Jesus do? Uh, and it's funny, as we really read scripture and find out what Jesus do, we find out we don't really do what Jesus would do. <laughs> we, we, it's a good saying, uh, but we don't do it. Because there's a lot of things that Jesus tells us to do. we be honest, we don't do it. We, we just do not do it, okay? We, I'm, I know I don't all the time. Can anybody relate? Um, because a lot of times, we, we, there could be hard things, particularly when there are things that we don't want to do. And we have to understand that if we're going to be disciples and teaching others to be disciples, that there are going to be times where we're going to be asked to do things that we do not want to do, that we, are, we may feel uncomfortable uh, doing it, okay? So, um, you know, that's just the one thing. Um, all right. Uh, and so discipleship not only involves the process of becoming a disciple, but making other disciples through teaching and evangelism. So it doesn't just start with, it doesn't stop with me learning. I'm learning and I should be teaching others. Everybody understand that? I, I'm learning and I should be pouring into someone else. I'm learning and I'm teaching. I'm learning and I'm teaching. I come to church, I hear the word, I apply it to my life, and then I go teach it. I come to church, I hear the word, I go out and apply it, and I also go to teach, all right? And so a lot of times we just, we're just good with us. 
We're just good with, with our family. You know, we're just good with our little network. And Christ has said, no, that's not, that's, that's not my command. That's not my call. I'm calling you to make disciples. I'm call so I'm not just calling you to just, just be a witness. I'm calling you to be a witness. And once they have accepted the message, then I want you to teach them. Because it's just like a baby. You know, when a baby is born, you don't just tell the baby and say, all right, my job was done. I went through nine months. You done took me through a lot. You here. Now you on your own. You know, the baby start crying. You can't look at the baby and say, well, get pick up the bottle and, and, get, and drink if you so thirsty. You can't do that to a newborn baby. Am I right? Because what? The baby going to keep crying until you do what? Pick up the milk and put it in his mouth. And you continue to do that until the point where the baby now will you know, it'll grab the bottle without your help. Why? Because it's learning. It still can't go get the bottle, but at least it can hold the bottle. Does it make sense? You, they're growing. And then as they get older, now they don't even want you to feed them. They want to feed themselves. Why? Because you have been teaching them along the way, and now they're learning, and now they are getting to the point where they can now do it on their own. And that's the same th way when we are working with people, working, um, uh, developing people, uh, that we, we don't, we're not just getting, you know, we're not just uh, leaving them at the altar when we say, okay, great, you accepted Christ. Okay, now figure it out. <laughs> no, it is our job as the church, not just leadership, not just pastors, everybody, it's everyone's responsibility. See, I believe if we all um, took ownership to this, um, that this is how we grow our church. You want to grow a church? You grow by discipling, making disciples, not just church members, not just people who show up, but actually discipling them, teaching them through our different gifts that God has given us and the way that we fit into the body. All right? So, um, so again, so when we talk about uh, this process, it's becoming disciple, um, making uh, disciples through what? Teaching and evangelism. So we are, you know, we all can be involved in evangelism. What is evangelism? Evangelism is just simply going out and telling the good news of Christ, going out and telling somebody what God has done. So you don't have to be a preacher to go tell somebody how good God is, you know, what God has done for you. You know, you're, you'd be surprised. Your testimony may be something that somebody else could really, you know, they really want to be, you know, uh, you just don't know where they are. You don't know what your testimony may do for their life. OK, and so this is why uh, when God has done something for us, we should turn around and then share that good news, encourage somebody. All right. And this is how we begin to make disciples. That's what Jesus did. You know, he went out, he called, and then he began to show them who he was. All right. All right. So discipleship involves learning. OK, um, so it involves our learning, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, when we get to this point, we were like, oh my goodness, if I was learning, uh, you know, I thought I was done with learning. <laughs> no, it, it involves learning. Okay. Why? We all should be to the point where we want to be better. We, 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 at, no matter where we are in life, we all should want to be better, to do things better. Okay. So uh, first, we're, we're learning from God, all right? So let's turn to John uh, 6, 45. Hopefully, hopefully everyone is there. Let me just... Uh, I'm sorry, just uh, checking a couple things so that I know some people, I sent some information for our Zoom for people to, uh, to get on for some reason, the line is still ringing busy. Uh, so I apologize if I, um, if you see me, if you see me doing that. Okay, all right. All right, so if you have it, it reads as such, John 
six. All right, so we have, uh, let's see, John 6, 45. All right, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. All right, so it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh, cometh to me. All right. All right, so let's all look at Isaiah 54, 13. Isaiah 54, 13. All right, 54, 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. All thy children shall be taught of the Lord. We learn and learn from the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. All right, uh, let's uh, turn to Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. All right, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear, ch dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. All right, uh, be ye therefore as followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ has loved us. You know, what are the things that we're teaching people? We're teaching people to do what? To walk in love. You know, pastor all the time is constantly talking about um, love your neighbors, love each other. Let's put away these, you know, uh, schisms and, you know, these uh, things that have happened 15 and 20 years ago. And we're still having, you know, issues. We're still having uh, problems coming, coming together. Um, so part of discipleship, one of the things that Christ did, he talked about love. Matter of fact, Jesus talked about us loving our enemies. And if we can admit that's definitely one of them commands that we not, what would Jesus do? Not that one. Uh, or not as easy. Uh, we're not without being pushed by the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit, you know, pushing on us. That's why he's, that's why he gave us the Holy Spirit so that we're able to do the things that we can't do. So that's why he's given us power because he knows that there are things that we won't do. We can't do on our own. We just simply can't do. We, we're powerless to do it. But because I had the power of the Holy Spirit, I had the power to do the things that Jesus is asking me to do. You know, when I talked on Sunday, um, you know, when we talk about sometimes excuses and yes, you know, God understands. He knows the Bible says he knows that we are just dust. He, he knows us, but we can't keep using being human as an excuse all the time, you know, because sometimes we use it as an excuse, not just to really to showcase our, 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 our frailties, but sometimes we use it as a way of not really doing what we're supposed to do. You know, when it is when you don't really want to do something, you, you, you come up with all of the reasons why you can't do it. Am I right? You know, um, <laughs> you know well, hey, why don't you do this? Ah, well, you know, I, I don't really know how to do that. Because the truth of the matter is, um, when you really want to do something, you'll learn it. Am I right? You, you, will, figure it, you will figure it out when you want to do it. But when you don't want to do it, you'll come up with an excuse. And God says, I have given you power. So I know some of the things that I'm asking you are difficult. I know some of the things that I'm asking you to do 
may seem hard, but I have given you power to do it. Does that make sense? I've given you power. See, uh, you and I cannot walk this Christian life alone. We cannot be successful in this Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit, which is Christ living in us. We cannot do it. We will not be successful. The only way that we can be successful is when we crucify ourselves daily and let the power of the Holy Spirit empower us to do the things that Christ is asking us to do. And we're going to be going in, into that a, a, a little deeper. All right. Uh, let's go to 1 Peter 15, 16. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm sorry, that's one, that should be uh, 1 Peter 1. Yeah, so 1 Peter 1, 15, and it's supposed to be 15, I apologize. Uh, so 1 Peter chapter 1, 15 and 16. And for those who are online, uh, could you guys do me a favor? That way I, don't, I won't keep feeling like I have to stop. If you know some of the choir, some, some members of the church who we normally be on. If you don't mind just giving them a text and just kind of texting them uh, the Zoom information, uh, letting them know, um, you know, to try to, you know, to try to come on via Zoom. Uh, I will also put on, uh, they should be able to, you know, they should be able to just, just also dial in. I believe the dial in information was in the bulletin uh, from this week. So if you don't mind just uh, sending that information out, uh, just only so I can not stop, keep stopping to respond to text. Um, all right, so First Peter chapter 1, 15. But as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So we're learning from God. Um, he's teaching us uh, to be holy, teaching us to follow after the example of Christ, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more uh, about that, uh, what that means. Uh, but just, again, uh, learning, it involves learning. Um, it takes time. It takes work um, to really be successful. And we understand that in life, the things that we've been successful in, we've only been successful when we put in the work, when we put in the time, when we've sacrificed, uh, when we, you know, because if, if being successful was so so easy, everybody would be it. And this is success in anything. This is in life and parenting and, um, you know, your job uh, and being a great uh, friend. Any, anything that's important to you, if you look over your life, if you're successful in it, you're successful because you put in work. Okay? Can we agree on that? You, 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 put, you put in work. All right? All right. Moving right along. All right, so discipleship involves learning from Jesus Christ, okay? So again, remember, uh, he is the one who has given us this command. He is the one who has said, I want you to go ye therefore and, not, and teach. I want you to go ye therefore and train. I want you to therefore go and teach them to learn from me, okay? So we're understanding that as disciples, we're learning from Jesus Christ. And from what we learn from Jesus Christ, we are teaching others, all right? So let's go to Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And if we look at verse uh, uh, 20, uh, 28, uh, right before it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Look at that. Uh, take my yoke. My, 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 my yoke is easy. You know, um, I want you to take my yoke, which is easy. Learn of me. You know, and uh, here again, here's the call, um, the good news. What is the good news? That you can come to Christ. You know, you can come to Christ. All you that are labor and are heavy laden, those who seem to have uh, the weight, uh, you know, the weight of the world on them and can't really see, you know, uh, any way out. He says, look, come learn of me, learn, learn of me, learn from me, learn about me. Because what? My yoke is easy. Okay. Um, and he said, I am meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My burden is like the, it's not like the world. All right. It's not like the world. And again, what is it? Learn of me. And that's what we should be doing. And not just on Sunday. All right. If our learning is only on Sunday, then we're really missing out on what it really means to follow, to follow Christ. Um, Sunday is just really a culmination of the body of believers coming together to worship God and to edify the bodies through our gifts and, you know, those kind of things. But it shouldn't be the only time that we're coming together to learn. You know, that is when we all come together as a body to learn and hear the word, but that should not be the only time, okay? That should be a time, not the only time, am I right? All right, that's something that we should be doing on a daily basis, learning from God, learning uh, what, what, learning the ways of Christ. And guys, can I let you know that, you know, we will be learning for eternity. We will never, ever get it off. So we can never get to the point where we say, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> this is not going to happen. No, we're constantly learning because he is so vast and so, you know, beyond our comprehension, we will never fully learn everything that there is to learn about Christ. All right. And so we certainly want to, you know, again, uh, uh, this is this is a daily, a daily, daily routine, daily, doing it daily, discipleship, daily. You know, uh, you and I should be able to have, as we're learning and as we're growing, we should be looking at who am I discipling? Who am I responsible for, for teaching and learning? Am I just someone who just getting it all for myself and I'm not giving it out? No. Uh, uh, who, so I'm getting the information. I'm learning of Christ. I'm growing in Christ. But then I have to look at, well, then who am I now teaching? Who am I giving it to? You don't have to be an evangelist. You, it could be your children. It could be your spouse. It could be your coworkers. It could be whoever God brings into your path. But as you are learning, you should then turn around. I'm telling you, it, you know, it, it, things that get real exciting when you start, when you, when it's not just about you, when it's not just about what you can get and not about your time and not just about your agenda and about what I can get. And when it, becomes, when, it, when it goes beyond you, it starts getting exciting, particularly when you see people are responding to what it is that you, God has given you to import, to pour into people. Okay. So let's go to John 13, 15. So St. John's 13, verse 15. Everybody there? We do not. Okay. All right. John 13, 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Okay, so let's go to let's go up to verse twelve, so we can kind of get an idea of what uh, Christ is uh, speaking speaking of here. All right, so if you look at twelve, so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was sat down again, 
He said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for I for so I am. And if I if I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, 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 I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he is sent, neither he that is sent greater than he that have sent him. All right. And so when we look at this, this story, we understand uh, an example of discipleship. We understand an example of learning from Christ. We see an example of D Jesus teaching his disciples what, you know, a task that was um, slated for slaves. You know, um, in the Old Testament, you know, what they would do that they would have water and what they would do that they would wash the feet of the travelers because their feet would have accumulated dust and dirt and everything like that. So this was a way when if they would come into the house, the servants would wash their feet. And so uh, before this, they were having this argument about who was going, who's the greatest. And Jesus is saying, look, I am the master. I'm going to show you an example. And if I can do this, then this is what I want you to do to others. Okay. And so now, of course, if you have an argument about who's the greatest. And the next thing you know, Jesus is asking you to wash somebody's feet. You're like, ain't no way in the world I'm washing nobody's feet. All right, I'm not washing nobody's feet. So what did Jesus do? He says, look, you know what? I'm going to give you an example. I want to show you what it means to follow me and what it means to do what I do. Back to our, what would Jesus do? This is what Jesus would do, all right? And so he, he takes his garment and he washes their feet. Something that only slaves do. Here is the master doing it. And he says, I'm doing it because I want to teach you. I want to teach you. And I'm giving, he says, what is he saying? In verse 15, I have given you an example. Remember, Christ is our example. That means the things that he's done, he's done as an example so that we can do it. Okay? So he has given us an example so that we can do it. Now, in this case, he was just showing them that the greatest among you are to be servants. Okay? So we're, we're teaching others, we're touching other people not to be so haughty and how great you are in God and the wonderful things that God has given you. Yes, God may move in your life and move through you and your ministry and everything that you do. Uh, you're having great success, but he wants you to have a sense of humility. Don't get so big and high-minded that you forget to do the task that you think uh, the lowly people should do. Because this is why he gave us this example. He says, because I want to teach you that no matter how great you are, you can still, you are still a servant. All right. And that's the part of discipleship. Again, as we're teaching people, we're teaching people how to treat others in a way that most people would not do. And again, you know, uh, everybody ain't washing everybody's feet, you know, which was in that day. But what we're doing, it says, you know what, this is an example. Because again, again, he says, go ye therefore and to all the world, and teach, make disciples, train them, teach them to do the things that I do. And these are one of the things that he's done. All right, so let's go to Ephesians 4, 20 and 21. All right, Ephesians 4, 20 and 21. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is, in Jesus, excuse me, that you put off concerning the former conversations, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, 
and be renewed in your in the spirit of your mind, and that and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay, he says, but you have not, but you have not so learned Christ. If so, that you have heard him, you have been taught by him as in the truth of Christ. So he's saying, so so because you have learned of Christ, what are you going to do? You're going to put away the former conversations of the old man. You're going to put away doing the things that you used to do. One of the things that we're teaching people, you know, uh, teaching disciples, you know, we're teaching them on how not to revert back to the old man, to revert back to doing things they used to do, doing things they way they used to do them. Okay, we're teaching them the ways of Christ, teaching them that they have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. They have been given a new man. They've become, they've been, you know, uh, they've become new creatures in Christ. And so now because they are new creatures in Christ, uh, they don't need, they don't have to go and do the things of old. They don't have to do the things that they used to do because they have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus came into their lives, uh, he destroyed the power of sin, the connection of sin uh, in their life so that they are now, they don't have to do it. They're not forced to do it, okay, because they have, the power of sin has been broken in their life. Okay, now when you and I sin, we do it when we make a decision ourselves. Okay, when we go, and the Bible says that we are drawn away from, by, by our own lust. Okay, but it's not because we just do it, we're following after the flesh. We do it because we just, you know, we decided that's what we want to do. Okay, uh, he says, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know, refresh your mind. There's a refreshing. Okay, be refreshed. All right, um, put on the new man after which God has created in righteousness and true holiness, all right? So learning from Christ, taking on his yoke, really learning what does it mean to, you know, to, 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 to walk after Christ, to be a disciple, to be a learner of Christ, all right? And then as I'm learning, I'm teaching others, all right? Let's go to Philippians 2, 5. Everyone there? And it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Okay? And so um, when, we, when, we, when we look here, and let's um, just so that we can get a full um, kind of understanding. Let's go to let's go to verse one and read down. All right, if you have it. All right, it says, "If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any love of comfort, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind." Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each, let each esteem other better than themselves. Let, I'm sorry, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let's see what was the mind of Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him in the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
All right. So when we take a look here, uh, learning from Jesus, again, following his example, once again, he knew who he was. He was the very son of God. He was the very son of God. But it says, look, he was in the, when it says being in the form of God, he, being God, thought it was not robbery to be equal with God, meaning that he knew that he, that, that he was God. Okay. But he made himself of no reputation. When he came down here, he, he did. Matter of fact, Jesus was so lowly that people did not even know who he was. He was somebody that if he walked by, if you saw him on the street, there was nothing about him that stood out that made him say, you know, I am the great creator. Okay. There was nothing about him. Nothing. Um, if you looked upon him, there was nothing that seemed so um, extraordinary um, other than when he spoke, you, there was power. And so here, um, he didn't come down uh, and made, he didn't make a reputation of, of, of his own, meaning that he didn't come down and brag about being the son of God. He didn't come down and brag about being, I'm the great creator. He didn't brag. Um, but he, what, did, what did he do? He came and he took on the form of a servant. Here is the great I am now taking on the form of a servant. He didn't, he didn't create a, a reputation, meaning that he was boisterous. But he took on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And guess what? Being a fashion of a man, he humbled himself. One of the things of, of discipleship and learning and teaching is teaching us how to humble ourselves. And sometimes that's one of the hardest things for us to do is for us to humble ourselves. And I want to let you know, it's something, you know, we want to learn to humble ourselves so we don't have God humble us. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Jesus, again, what did he do? He humbled himself, took on the form of a servant being in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So when he came down, what did he do? He was obedient to his father. And that's one of the things that we, we are teaching in discipleship. We're teaching people to be obedient, how to be obedient to Christ. And Christ gives us an example. How obedient was he? He was obedient unto his father unto death. He was obedient unto his father unto death. He knew that his mission was to come and to die. And guess what? He was obedient to his father. He submitted to the will of his father, even knowing it would take him to the cross. And what are the things that are we, what are we teaching others? We're teaching others uh, of obedience to obey Christ, to know one, what he's asking you to do. And then once you know what he's asking you to do, then be obedient. Be obedient even when it's uncomfortable. Be obedient even when it doesn't feel good. Because he's given us an example that you know what? You can be obedient in any situation. And because he was obedient, God has exalted him. And guess what? He's exalted him above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and the things of earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. All right? All right, let's all go to 1 Peter 2.21. All right, 1 Peter 2, 21. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we, that ye should follow in his footstep. All right, let's take a look, let's continue. Who did no sin, neither was gall found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, 
who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whom stripes ye are healed. For ye were as sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So what are the things, what is, what is Peter uh, uh, stating that we should learn from Christ? He says, look, therefore, when you, you therefore, even here too, you are called because Christ also suffered for us. We're teaching people that Christ suffered for us. But let's look at, he says, and look at this, that you should follow in his footsteps, that you should follow his example. Okay. He suffered and he's teaching you us how to follow in his examples. And let's take a look at that. Who did no sin, neither was there guile. There was no filth found in his mouth. Okay. And when he was reviled, he reviled not. So when he was attacked, when he was ridiculed, he did not respond back. Now I know that's something that's difficult for us because we not going to, you, you ain't going to say about so much to me. Yeah, I may, I may let one thing slide. But there ain't going to be too many more things you won't say to me and not get a mouthful back. Am I right? Everybody on Zoom, just raise your hand if that's you. If that's you. Come on, be honest. I see you laughing, Auntie. I see you laughing. Uh-huh. I see my wife. Uh-huh. I see others that got their video muted. So y'all don't, don't want me to see your hands. That's okay. <laughs> but it ain't, you ain't going to do too many times. <laughs> and so, and so once again... This is this is why we're constantly learning. I know, I know you ain't gonna be, you know, you gotta go say, I know I'm learning. I know I'm growing. I, I know I can raise my hand. Uh, and I'm I'm growing in that. Um, that he's teaching me. You know what? You don't have to respond to everything that everybody says to you. You don't have to say anything. Matter of fact, when Jesus was um when he was ridiculed, he actually didn't say nothing. When he went on trial and they was accusing him and they were lying, he didn't even say anything. He was quiet. All right? Now look at the next thing. Um, he fretted not. <laughs> Here's the very, he could have spoke a word and boom, disappeared. No trace of him. Had the power. But he didn't fake. See, so some of us, even if we didn't do it, we would at least threaten him. Like, do it again. Say it again. <laughs> That's not what Jesus would do. <laughs> That's not the example that he's trying to teach us. He's trying to teach you. <laughs> Keep your mouth closed. I know some of y'all are like, okay, no preacher. I'm still growing. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm growing <laughs> uh, in that. But he did not threaten. But what did he do? He committed himself to him who judges righteousness. So what he did, he committed himself unto God. And that's what he's teaching us to do. Now, of course, now we like again, uh, we understand that we're 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 not going to hit the mark all the time. We're gonna make mistakes, we're gonna do things that we're not supposed to do. But what it is is that we ought to be able to understand that that's what it is and know, you know what, I can be better. Don't just say, Oh, I'm oh, I'm just human and that's the way I am. No, that's an excuse. Because you have power. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have power, okay? So, uh, but it's learning. That's why the Holy Spirit is working on us daily. Do you understand? He's daily working on us. And I thank God daily he's working on us. Daily he's conforming us, shaping us, molding us to the image of Christ. That we would do what? That we would reflect Christ. That we would do the things that Christ, this is how we teach others. As he's working on us and he's grown in us, we now are able to now teach others. And again, what did we say in the beginning? We're teaching others to the point where they now become teachers. They now are able to go and teach. And this is how you start to expand and explode exponentially. Okay? This is the thing. These are the things uh, that you do. Amen. All right. Uh, so the next thing, we're learning from the Holy Spirit. We're teaching discipleship we says involves learning and involves our uh, uh, of learning we're in the classroom taking learning from god all right so we learn we say we saw learning from god learning from christ jesus and now we're going to look at scriptures learning from the holy spirit 
All right. So let's look at John 14, 26. John 14, 26. If you're there, give me a nod. All right. All right. Let's look at 26. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay, so the Holy Spirit, the paracletus, the comforter, going to come, he's going to teach us. And this is why God, this is why Jesus says, you know, look, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to send you the comforter. And this is what the comforter is going to do. And he tells us, you know, scripture always tells, you know, tells us what, you know, exactly what we're talking about. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he should do what? He should teach you all things. So the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives is to teach us all of the things that Jesus taught. All of the things that Jesus taught the Holy Spirit has come to teach us. That's why I said, it didn't say come teach us some things. It didn't come, it is not going to teach us most things. But scripture says he's, he's come that he may teach us all things and do what? Bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever the things I told you. Because when you look at scripture, there were some things that Jesus told the disciples that they were not able to handle at the time. They did not understand what it meant. And so what the Holy Spirit does is that the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to bring, he's going to bring back to their remembrance those things that he said. And then teach them, give them the meaning of what they said. Okay? So the Holy Spirit in our lives has come so that he can teach us. That's why we have to have a teachable spirit. We have to be teachable. We have to be willing to be taught. Amen? We have to be willing to be taught. And I'm telling you, uh, these things, you know, as we that, that we're talking about uh, challenges us in our flesh. Because there's a lot of things in our flesh that we just really don't want to do, if we be honest. And that's why this, this, this discipleship is something uh, that takes work, okay? That involve it involves learning. It's something that we just gotta we have to lock into, and that's why I'm, I'm excited. Um, you know that uh, that the Lord laid this on my heart, and as Pastor was talking doing um, for the last couple of months on uh, uh, Jesus is all about Jesus. You know, giving us all of the things. You know, letting us know that it's all about Jesus. And this is just sort of like an extension because since it's all about Jesus, what was his teachings? Because, because we are disciples and to create disciples, we are learning and we should be imitating. We should be emulating. We should be doing the things that he is saying. We are, should be growing in Christ to the point that when we speak, it sounds like he's speaking. That's the goal for, you know, that we grow in him that as I speak, it sounds like he's speaking. To grow to the point that when I do, it's as if he's doing it. And that takes growth. And guess what? It takes time. Okay? It's not something that happens overnight. It takes time. So, the Holy Spirit comes to teach us all things. Okay? To bring back to our remembrance whatsoever that he told us. Okay? All right. Let's look at Luke 12 and 12. All right? If you're there, it reads it like this. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. All right? Let's go to, let's go to uh, eight. Let's go, uh, let's go back. Let's go up to verse eight, and let's read down to what um, is being said. All right? So we're in chapter 12. Let's go to eight. And I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. 
But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be given, forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they shall bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. All right. So when we look in this scripture, when you're talking about, and this is, Jesus is talking about how we are to respond uh, and, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, when, you know, when we're being brought in before the magistrate, because as we look at scripture and as we see how the church was birthed, uh, they're going to be brought into the synagogues uh, and, you know, questioned. And what he's saying is that um, when you go, don't even think of, don't even worry about what you're going to say because the Holy Spirit is going to teach you. All right. So now this doesn't mean, um, you know, going forward that we're not, we're not supposed to learn of God um, and study so that we can show ourselves approved and know what to say. But he was just saying, you know, when, when they bring you before, when they bring you for the magistrates, they bring you for the synagogues and they question you. And he's like, look, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you, don't, don't even worry about what you're going to say. Just, just rely on the Holy Spirit and he's going to tell you what the things that you're going to say. Okay. And that's just a wonderful thing and a wonderful lesson as we are learning, you know, uh, you know, ask Lord, what shall I say in a certain situation? You know, it may be on your job and somebody that then just work your last nerves, you know, patient where, you know, me and my wife working, you know, in, in healthcare, it could be patients. It could be, uh, you'd be your boss. It could be a family member. It could be any situation that you could think of, you know, as because we're disciples and we're learning, we should ask Holy Spirit, what should I say in this particular instance? Cause I know what I want to say, but then I might not be Christ-like. So Lord, what should I say? Because he promised that he what? He would teach us all things. He would teach us what? What to say. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, um, so that so that because that so we're training ourselves that before we say something to ask the Lord, what should I say? Sometimes he may say, he may tell you to say nothing. And that, my ladies and gentlemen, is hard when you got all kinds of stuff stored up that you want to say. And the Holy Spirit tells you, don't say nothing. Man, I'm telling you, that's one of the worst feelings. Because you just want to give them everything you got. But the Holy Spirit, don't say anything. Remember, you're my example. Remember, people are looking at you to learn about me. Shh, I got it. Let me work this situation out for you. All right? All right, let's go to St. John 16. Anybody have any questions at this point? If you have any questions, you can unmute your phone and just ask the question. Uh, any question that you may have um, at this up to this point, I want to just keep talking since I because since I do have this interaction here. Um, you know, I do want to, you know, if you have any questions or maybe you have a comment that you want to share uh, with the group, um, you can uh, do so at this time. Anyone? There's a comment. Darling, great job, son. Oh, Pastor, welcome. I didn't, we didn't know that you were on. Thank you so much uh, for being on. We apologize for, I'm not sure what happened with the other line. It's actually still ringing busy. I'm gonna have to send a, I'm gonna have to send a message over to the, uh, the conference call line because uh, we don't, I don't know what happened uh, with the line. So I do apologize for those who are trying to get in. I'll have to send a message out to everyone who was trying to get in, but for whatever reason, the company, the line is, uh, the lines are down. Uh, but uh, thank you, uh, Pastor. Uh, any comments or anything you'd like to share, Pastor? I just want to say things happen and that you're doing a great job. Just continue doing what you're doing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Uh, any, anyone else? Well, thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Marla, were you saying, babe, were you saying something? No, I was patching past it through to you. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, thank you. All right, so let's look, look at St. John 16, 13. <laughs> St. John 16, 13. All right. If you're there, it says, it reads this. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, and he shall receive of mine, for for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you, or show all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you, or show it unto you. All right. So once again, learning from the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, how be it? Now let's look at, let's look at verse twelve. So this because this is going to. Uh, I'll talk about what I had mentioned on, on before, uh, what it says, uh, verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. All right, so you see that? So Jesus is saying, he says, look, I, I, have, so many, I, have, I have some things that I want to say, say to you, but you can't bear it right now. You won't be able to take it right now. You won't understand it right now. But this is how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come. Now, once I am ascended unto heaven, I'm, when the Father sends you the spirit of truth, what is he going to do? He's going to guide you in all truth, in all truth. And I love that word, all, inclusive, nothing left out. Anything that you need to know, anything you need to learn, the Holy Spirit has been given to guide us. That means that his guidance is not just in one particular area. He has come to guide us in all truth. Not just things as it pertains to the church. Everything that is true, he has come to guide us in all truth. So anything that we have questions of, anything uh, that we have concerns about, the Holy Spirit has been given to us to guide us in truth, to lead us in truth. Okay? And what is he going to do? Uh, because guess what? He does not speak of himself. He only speaks what he hears. When and where is that? He only hears, speaks what he's heard from the Father. And I just love the way the Trinity works. Jesus points to the Father. The Holy Spirit points to Jesus. Working together. He does not speak of himself, but he, whatsoever he shall hear, that's what he speaks. Whatever the Father says is what he speaks. Is what he says. And guess what? And he was to show us things to come. Show us the things that are coming. What's next? He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it to you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So learning, the Holy Spirit is teaching us. He's going to tell us the things that the Father is saying. He's going to show us. He's going to lead us in truth. And guess what? As we're learning and as we're growing, guess what we're supposed to do? As disciples, we're to teach others. Remember, we talked about the disciples in the beginning. It's discipleship is to teach, you know, as someone who is a learner. Teaching people to be a learner, to be a student, to be a follower. You know, uh, with Jewish, you know, with uh, Jewish uh, disciples, they, you know, they will follow uh, their uh, their master, their teacher, uh, and they will follow them to the point to even to emulate them, to imitate them, uh, to become like them. They would dress like them, talk like them, uh, and that's how you and I should be. We should, uh, as we are. Uh, uh, a learning from God, again, we should be growing to the point where we begin to sound like him because we are, we are learning from him. We, he is teaching us and we are learning and we are imitating. We are really 
learning what would Jesus do, and not only to make it as a wonderful phrasing and wonderful saying, but we actually would do it, to actually do it. Okay, uh, and this is why we again, as, I, as I'm repeating myself, that we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit. We've been given the power of the Holy Spirit to aid us in doing those things, to aid us and giving us the ability to do those things. Amen. All right, let's go to First Corinthians two thirteen. First Corinthians 2.13. All right. If you have it, it reads as such. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's which man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay, uh, let's go to, let's look up and let me see. You know what, let's go to verse six. Uh, this passage always says, this is Bible study, it's be good, you know, it has some good, it has some reading. And this kind of will give you a, um, you know, as we talk about how scripture, um, it's always good to read um, before and after to really get to, to understand um, what a scripture is saying. So let's start at verse six. And it reads as this, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, which we know, which we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things we also speak, not in the words with man's wisdom teacheth, but what the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. All right. So uh, when we when we look at this uh, scripture. Uh, it talks about, we, we, uh, uh, Paul is saying, we don't speak with the wisdom of the world, um, but we speak uh, with the wisdom uh, of God, all right? And of course, when we, you know, we see, see the scripture, and we see a lot of people say this, uh, read the scripture, um, but it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the hearts of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love us. And a lot of times we read it and we stop right there. But if we continue reading, we see who it has been revealed to. Because verse 10 says, but God hath revealed them. So it is written, I have not seen, you know, uh, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man those things that God has prepared for them that love him. Okay. But when we read the next verse down, we see that, but he revealed them to us by his spirit. And that the spirit search of all things, even the deep, the, yea, the deep things of God. Okay. And so, uh, you know, so the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals to us the deep things of God, okay? And he also lets us know the things that are freely given to us by God. So if we ever have a question of, I don't know what I have, you know, uh, what am I supposed to have and what God has for me, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal uh, those things to you. So uh, let's look at one more scripture before we uh, end on tonight. I see we're at the, uh, the top of the hour. Uh, so let's look at Ephesians 1, 7. Ephesians 1, 7. And if you have it, it reads, In whom we have redemption through his blood, 
the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. And let's read, continue. Wherein he has abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which is in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Okay, uh, so again, uh, learning uh, from uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit being our uh, teacher. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and um, just uh, wrap up here. Um, once again, I, I, I thank God for those who were uh, able to get on our Zoom. We will be doing this uh, throughout the month of August. Um, again, um, I certainly, uh, we certainly are grateful and do apologize again for uh, something again that was not in, in, in our control. Um, not sure what happened. Um, and also, this is my first time actually doing a Zoom to, as a teaching from a teaching mechanism. I've been on several Zooms, but this is actually my first one doing it from a training standpoint. So we certainly welcome uh, your feedback, <clears throat> what we could do to uh, make it better. Again, I apologize for kind of starting a little late only because we were just trying to uh, fix a problem. So thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. And uh, before I let uh, before I let us go, since we have Pastor on the line, I'm going to ask Pastor uh, if he has any last words that he would like to share uh, with us or any comments before we go. Hey Amen. I just want to uh, say to uh, you and to all who have been a part of this uh, Bible study by way of Zoom, uh, it has been uh, quite inspirational, uh, quite uplifting. Uh, and I have uh, learned a lot, man, about discipleship. And uh, as you said, at one point, uh, it was good to have a teachable spirit. So, uh, because of the fact that I do have a teachable spirit, uh, and in spite of the fact that how long I have been uh, in the ministry, I'm still learning so many things that you brought out tonight. But that special. Uh, for me, and I'm quite sure I'm going to part of, uh, of Zoom uh, Bible study. God bless you, son. A job well done, and things happen down the country. I hope uh, you will perfect the thing, and uh, I'm only going to get the that somebody else said, excuse me, English, going to get quarter and quarter. Love you, son. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, well, once again, everyone, thank you so much for those who have participated. Um, we are also going to be recording, recording the uh, Zoom. I see that we are able to record. So um, for whatever reason, if we're uh, unable to uh, to get on it, we should be able to uh, have a copy of it. Um, also, one of the things that I also like to learn uh, as we close, as you notice, there's like a chat button on your um you know, that you should be able to see on your screen. So at any time, if there's a question and you don't want to uh, say interrupt me um, or feel that you're going to interrupt me, just click on that chat button and you can uh, put your question um, in that chat and I'll be able to see it. And then I'll, at, you know, at the appropriate time, I'll be able to uh, answer, uh, you know, answer the question. So again, uh, this is just a way of you know, us being able to uh, see, you know, uh, see this, you know, see the PowerPoint, give you an opportunity to, uh, you know, write it down and, um, you know, do different things like that. Uh, I want to thank Pastor Ham for the uh, opportunity uh, to share and to do the Bible study. I, uh, I thank God that he's entrusted me to do this uh, for the month. I don't, something I do not take lightly uh, when you are given, um, you know, the responsibility to uh you know, to share over someone's uh, a flock. So uh, we are grateful again. So again, this will be the same information uh, next week. Um, make sure that we, um, if you can help me let everyone know, um, you know, to try to get on Zoom. I also will, there is a number you can actually dial in to Zoom. Um, that way we had this as a backup in the event. Uh, there are any issues with the conference call next week. 
uh, that we could all be here. So uh, once again, I want to say thank you. I also want to thank my wife for, uh, for helping me uh, get this together. Um, and um, so I do appreciate her. Uh, and I see you, my friends and family, Bobby, great to see you, Andel, uh, uh, Deacon, uh, and uh, Deaconess Rackley. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being a part. And then once again, if there's anything that we can do to improve this experience, um, please let me know. I'm always looking to improve our experience. So if you have any uh, things that you'd like to share that I can improve on in terms of just how we run it, I am definitely open. So let's close in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity uh, that you've given us. And I pray, God, that you have been glorified in this. Uh, God, we know that uh, all things are in your control and you know um, all things. Uh, and so, God, I pray that as we continue to move forward, that you will continue to uh, teach me, uh, that I may share uh, with others how to, um, you know, how we all, and as we're learning together, how we're learning to become disciples and not only become learners, but also become teachers. So, God, I thank you that, uh, that we are growing, that we're learning. Um, and I pray, God, that you will just continue to move and bless. If we ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ, thank God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. And I will uh, see everybody uh, same time, same place uh, next week. All right. Okay. God bless. Bless. Good night. God bless. Good night. Hey.